Hi, this is John Thompson. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I am currently studying Japanese. Now, a lot of my study now revolves around my website called JT Language, which is a free and cooperative website. So that's why my screen is showing the main menu of JT Language. Now, in my Japanese study, um, I basically have three main, three or four main activities that I do. Uh, one that I do normally first is to uh, review kanji. Let me go to my flashcard tool here. Now, basically, there is a book called Remembering the Kanji by James Heisig, where he took the about 2200 standard kanji characters as defined by the Japanese government and basically uh, described a method for studying them by one breaking each character up into its component parts and assigning a keyword both to the component parts as well as to the overall character itself that is an English keyword that actually most often corresponds to its actual meaning or one of its meanings. For example, you see in my flashcard here, this particular character that has two main parts. The part on the left has a keyword of say words or say, and the part on the left has a keyword of um, excuse me, the part on the left has a keyword of words and the part on the right has a keyword of director. And actually, this director, well, both of these parts are actually composed of even smaller parts. Like, director has um, the little cling is called a coat hanger and a, and a, a one or a floor, and the square is a mouth. So basically, by... Um, labeling these characters, we kind of use the symbolic nature of our brains to help us remember them. And to do so even more, you can make up stories related to the characters, like you make up some kind of a, a story that doesn't have to make a lot of sense. Like here, the words of the director, um, oh, I even forgot this character, parts of speech. The words of the director relate to parts of speech, or I don't know, something, something silly. I'm, I'm not very good at it right now because I don't actually use that method anymore. Um, this is not the first time I've studied characters before. Um, some years ago, I studied Chinese characters using a similar book, that, except that it only had 800 characters, and I did, in fact, uh, memorize stories for each character but what I found is that um, eventually I found, I found just uh, remembering the, the keywords for the component parts was enough that uh, then only when I was having trouble remembering the character would I create kind of a mnemonic story to go along with it. So in my flashcards, um, well, basically, you know, the book... Um, I fortunately found somebody who took the effort of writing down the uh, the characters and the component parts and the English keyword and so forth. Um, I have a document which I'll refer to in the description that points to a Google Doc where I basically list a lot of the resources that I use, not just for Japanese but for other languages as well and languages in general. And uh, I'll I'll point you to these particular this particular content there. But basically I found a list and was able to import it um, into JT language, which allows me, um, well you see on the, on the right here, I basically turned it into a course with two main groups of lessons. One where I have the, the uh, readings for the characters and the other where I just have the, the radicals with the keywords and the English keyword which is what I'm studying. For example, if you look at this study list, like you see it's got the, uh, 
the character in, in the place of the Romanji. I put the, uh, the, uh, the keywords for the component parts and the English is the actual English keyword. I'll go back to this, the, the study tool. So basically my flashcards, um, you start out, um, in this particular configuration, seeing the character, trying to remember it. Um, so like, I try to think in my mind, oh, parts of speech, or I'll look at the character, oh, words, director, oh, parts of speech, and usually will trigger the memory. And then I'll show the backside, and it shows the component parts. Unfortunately, some, some parts have multiple names, and it doesn't really kind of show any kind of hierarchy. So you just kind of have to know the, you can look in the book and, and actually see the names for the parts. As you go along, it kind of builds them up. And it, it'll basically pick one radical and then, then show you all the characters that use that same radical. So you're basically learning in groups of a, a key radical. So, um, I didn't actually remember this character because this is kind of a past lesson. So I'll, I'll hit one. I'll create it one here. One being that I, I couldn't remember it. If I remembered it perfectly or I would, I would pick something else. Like the bottom here shows a grade that's assigned as well as um, how long before it would show me the card again. So this is basically a space repetition system. So I click one and it basically this indicates that it's going to show it to me again in, in about a minute. And it goes on to the next character. And then I try to remember that. Oh, this is like, you know, food and director. And I know that that is uh, uh, domesticated. Domesticate, that is. And so on. I knew this one. So, but, you know, I... I actually made a little mistake, so maybe I'll say I'll do two and have it bring it back in 10 minutes to test my memory. And then it goes on to the next one. And uh, so this is one direction that I study characters in. Usually what I do is um, I first just, I'll, I know I don't know the character, so I'll show the definition. And then I'll write it down. I'll write down. I'll write the character up here. Um, I have some kind of paper with uh, broken up into a grid, so I can write the character in one cell. Just to kind of wet my mind. Um, this is actually a review since I studied the characters last year. So basically, I but unfortunately I stopped reviewing them. So decided, well, I kind of better go through the whole list again. So I'm studying about 20 characters a day. As a review, I started out with 50, but then the review debt got so high that uh, I cut it down to 20. And, and also I stopped doing the full space repetition. I basically focus on these, these 20 characters. This, this course is, I, I split, I, I set it up as a hierarchy of uh, 20 characters each, grouped with five, so I could go to um, this top level, this next level up, which will show me 100, 100 characters. And then once I finish the five sets of 20, I can, I can review the 100. And then when I finish the whole thing, I'll, I'll put it back into, I'll just go back into pure uh, space repetition and, and just do nothing but the uh, reviews. So I, uh, I go through and, and basically do space repetition on just that set of 20 characters. And then I've already wet my, wet my uh, memory with uh, writing the character, and then I'll switch the configuration over to I'll see the English keyword first, and then on that same paper I'll try to write the character, and then I can show I can show it, and also the the component parts names. 
this one has as components of a boat, a slave retainer, reclining, and a dish at the bottom right there. I'm going to go through and do these 20 characters in this direction. And so the ones I can remember, you know, I won't see them as frequently, but the ones I'm having trouble remembering, they'll come back more often in the space repetition. So that's, that's my character study. It, it usually takes me about uh, maybe 35 or 45 minutes to, to go through those. Maybe only 30, depending on which, what the characters are. And I usually do that in one session. Then I'll go off and do something else to give my brain a rest. Then I will, taking advantage of a profile mechanism, a user profile mechanism, J2 language, instead of kind of navigating to a different course, I'll basically change the profile and go back to what I was doing before. Uh, basically, um, the other part of my study is one, to study vocabulary, and two, to study sentences. In particular, I'm studying mostly um, listening ability. Uh, a few months ago, um, while I'm cooking, I started watching videos on YouTube that talk about learning languages. You know, ever since I started learning Chinese when I met Maggie some 20-something years ago, I kind of embarked on a quest to find the optimal way of learning languages. I mean, not all the time. I mean, for a long time, I just... I even stopped studying Chinese and just kind of coasted. But uh, more recently, the last uh, few years, I've been really trying to learn different languages and try to find the most efficient way of doing so. So I watched these videos. I basically scoured, uh, excuse me, scoured YouTube and, uh, and finally kind of narrowed it down to uh, some techniques that I think will be really useful. Um, in particular, uh, there's one guy, Stephen Krashen, who in the 70s kind of studied this, this idea that uh, uh, as humans, we, you know, learning a language is um, actually the process of acquiring language. And that to do so, it's most efficient to do so by, uh, by what he called comprehensible input. That is, by getting a lot of input that is um, at actually slightly above your level, such that there's, there's new things that you may not know in there. But yet, there's enough that you do know, such that it's still mostly comprehensible to you. And by doing, by practicing that, that input, be it listening or be it reading, that's the brain's most optimal way for, for actually acquiring the language. So basically anything you do that can, you know, improve your comprehension of some, of some material that you're studying will basically help you, um, basically acquire more language as you're just actively listening or reading. And so rather than balancing like input and output, like I was doing before, well, actually I was probably focusing too much on output. I kind of, kind of put the, a lot of output on pause and started doing a lot of more uh, input, in particular listening, because it seems I've been the most weak at listening. And because I don't really know kanji, kanji very well yet, I'm kind of postponing doing a lot of reading yet, 
until I finish the, uh, the kanji. Um, I'm actually up to the last 200 characters in my kanji review. So very shortly, I will basically be, be balancing more my reading and listening practices. But I can do both from within JD language. However, that, um, see, I, I've studied Japanese before, like, uh, you know, Meg and I, before we go on a trip, I try to study the language for a few months. And last year, 2020, in April, we had a crew scheduled, but then COVID happened. And uh, it happened to be a Japan cruise on the same ship that was quarantined. So needless to say, um, that April cruise was canceled. But I decided to continue studying Japanese and just to see, you know, how far I could get. And uh, boy, I tell you, it's not an easy language to learn. But I've been making slow but steady pro progress. Not as fast as some. For example, uh, there's a fellow who goes by the name of, oh, what's his name? Katsumoto? I think that's his name. He created a blog site called All Japanese All the Time, in which he kind of brought together kind of different language learning techniques that he kind of pulled off from a number of different sources. But really, his, his key focus is on this idea of comprehensible input and studying, getting a lot of input and not even trying to speak, that is not trying to generate output until you can actually understand a fair amount of the language through input. Because you think about it, you know, what's more important, input or output? Well, basically, what good is output if you can't understand what things people are asking or telling you? And so that was kind of a, a sea change for me. And so, which is why I've kind of shifted my focus and am now spending more time on input than on output. So um, let me go back to the actual study material. Um, the problem I ran into is that, uh, you know, I studied Japanese before, like I was saying, and I have some elementary knowledge, kind of a beginner level. And there's a lot of material for study at, at beginner level. There's like the Japanese Plot 101 stuff. And actually they have, uh, you know, multiple levels. But what I found was it, it's, uh, it's hard to find content at the right level for me, which is somewhere between beginner and intermediate. And another thing that uh, Katsumoto talks about in All Japanese All the Time, which has the acronym AJAT, is that you want to study content created by native speakers for native speakers. In other words, Katsumoto, he studied Japanese mostly by watching anime and, you know, extracting sentences and studying those sentences, as well as, you know, also at the same time studying the kanji. Basically, he says you should, you should write from the beginning, study kanji, and then, and study, uh, you know, basic grammar, get, get some basics of the grammar under your belt, and then, really focus on, on input by native speakers for native speakers. And he was so interested in, in, con, in anime, so that was his main, main study. Um, I'm not really into anime, anime that much, but I do love Japanese dramas, so um, I, I watch a fair amount of those. But I found that um, they're above, too far above my level. I mean, I, I still are using a plugin for Netflix called Language Learning with Netflix, which lets you kind of single step through the sentences and uh, 
see the, the Japanese and the English and you click on words, you get the definitions. It's a really cool tool, but the language is still kind of way above my level. So I, I, I wanted to find some, some content that was closer to my level. And I found that actually that's kind of hard to do because um, it's either very beginner level or it's, you know, native level. But I was lucky to find a, a number of things, a number of, of uh, channels on, on YouTube where they, they have some, some content. In particular, there's a, um, a channel by a fellow who calls himself Benjiro. He, he was a Japanese teacher on italki, which is a website where you can hire a tutor, which I also use occasionally. And he basically hired other italki teachers and um, recorded his uh, a simple conversation with them. And I basically took those, those videos and uh, put them on my website. Um, unfortunately, at present, they're, uh, they're not publicly accessible. I, I did it mainly so I could uh, study them within the JT language. Uh, for example, here's a, here's a video. Oh, I was already at some in the middle of where I was before. <laughs> And he's writing the uh, what he thinks is a vocabulary he knew from you. Mm -hmm. And then he also has his vocabulary in um, on a Google Doc that he gives you the link to. And so basically, these are you know uh, actually a very good level for me. And uh, a different of these conversations are, are kind of a different level. Some people kind of speak more slowly and, and more simply, and others get uh, quite a bit more advanced. Um, so that's good as well. And so I basically, um, I uh, in YouTube, you can uh, look at the transcript, um, which is unfortunately in this case, he didn't actually transcribe them. He, so it's the automated you, you, uh, Google uh, uh, subtitles. But nonetheless, I found that that's still pretty useful. And so I, I uploaded both the vocabulary um, from his list. Um, Unfortunately, he only provided the Ramaji, so I, I did the painstaking process of, of uh, well, first I, I basically just ran the auto-translate inside JT Language, which uses Google Translate. Um, well, actually, a JT Language, if it can find the Ramaji in the, in the dictionary, it will, it will pull out the, uh, the kanji, and if it, can't, if it can't figure it out, like if it's multiple words or something, then it will translate from the English but then it might it might not be the it might not match the emoji that he he put there. So then I have to I have to still check every one to make sure it's right and then edit it. So I can I had it when I imported it I had GT language split it up into groups of 20, 20 characters. And then I can use the uh, the flashcards again to study them. I got this on new only. And this mode, I'm having to play the audio, which was, um, I, uh, in GT language, you can also add synthesized audio, like if you don't have the native recordings. And you know, you can change the mode to practice reading. Or practice translating from the English. And again, you can use space repetition flashcards to study the vocabulary. And like say, you know, I can study 20 characters and then I, I can either go to the video. Kaneo. 
止めなくてはいけません。あんまりお酒を飲んでいません。こんにちは。こんにちは。元気ですか？あ、元気です。あ、お疲れ様。あ、私も元気です。ありがとうございます。はい、アメリカに住んでいますね。はい、今僕アメリカにいます。アメリカの人たちの生活はどうですか？はい、今僕アメリカにいます。アメリカのあのフロリダのマイアミ。And also, um, I can single step, for example. Say I want to just look at, listen to one sentence at a time. あの大学に行っています。Can play it back. Repeat. あの大学に行っています。I can go forward. 毎日授業があります。I can go backward. あの大学に行っています。ここにいます。アメリカのあのフロリダのマイアミというところで。And so on, or I can just kind of continue where I am. I can slow it down. And so basically, I can, you know, I can be listening along, and then if I hear something I don't understand, I can pause it and I can do the repeat. 今日は土曜日なので、and so on until I feel comfortable with it. Um, what I can do also, um, I could, you know, I could look down here. I see the English, see all three languages. I'm gonna add a new feature where I can have, you have the option of showing all the subtitles in all the languages. I mean, show all the language in the subtitles. A new feature on my Uh, language wish list. Um, or I can,、uh, there's a plugin called Rikakun for、um, Chrome only, which、um, lets you hover over something and it will pop up to give you a little pop up with the definition. So that's another way I could look at individual words. And again, another JT language feature I'm going to add is to let, let you do that here from within JT language. Just like、uh, if you've seen my other video, there's about this text study tool. I have a tool where you can basically click on words and get the definitions like that. So I'm basically going to duplicate that kind of thing here as well.、Um, Alternatively, um, I could.、Uh, um, I also imported the、uh, the transcript, the Google auto translated transcript or auto transcribed、um, subtitles into a sentences study list. Again, I broke it up into units of twenty. And there's a lot more sentences,、um, so it's actually a hierarchy of、uh, looks like、uh, 20 sentences in groups of 10 and so forth. So here, this should be just the 20. Where、um, you got the audio? Thank you, Scott. And、uh, then I added the、uh, using the translation mechanism, GT language. I added the、um, I did. Auto translated created the、uh, Romaji and the、uh, English translation, which of course, being an automated translation, is not going to be correct a lot of the time. It's funny how they picked deer for the casual speech here. <laughs> and of course, you can use the、uh, the flashcards by by going to the、uh, tools page. And what I normally do would do would be, I always start out with the listening. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Play it slow. Can you hear me? And then、uh, show the translation. And I could change the mode. Oh, I'm, I'm actually in a forward mode here. So it would, instead of being spatial repetition, it would just go forward.、Um, so you have other options for how the flashcards operate. 
and again you can change the uh, the card configuration I can practice reading Genki desu ka? Genki desu ka? Or I can practice translating. Genki desu ka? Genki desu ka? I mean, there's, there's an emotes for recording, but I'm not using any of that stuff right now. My main focus is to practice the listening, so um, at present, most of the time, I'm just using the, the, the listening. Genki desu ka? But very soon, um, I'll do more reading. Like on the vocabulary, I will kind of do like all three modes. But for now, I'm uh, I'm really focusing on the input. Uh, just the other day, I found a really nice video um, in which the uh, the person who made it recorded a conversation between herself and another Japanese person. Both of them are Japanese teachers. And uh, she was nice enough to create subtitles. So that means that I could download the uh, subtitles along with the video and put it in JT language. Now, if I can just remember where I put it, I think it's here. Oh, no, wait a minute. I think I created my own course for it. right here. Again, it's a YouTube video. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Minasan, konnichiwa, genki desu ka? Kyo wa tokubetsu na hito ni interview shitai to omaimasu. So, um, so I, I did the same thing with this. Um, uh, she, she did not provide word lists, but basically in JT language. Um, so I, I imported her uh, her sentences. This time I, I didn't break it up. I'll just use the, because uh, I'll just go through it and I can just use a space repetition if I want to. But uh, I, imp I imported her, her subtitles. She did both Japanese and English and then ran the, the auto translate to get the uh, the Romanji. Um, and actually how I did this, there's a tool called SRS, uh, subs to SRS or something like that, which uh, will take a video and, uh, uh, and subtitle files and then extract clicks, clips of uh, audio, video, and a picture snapshot. Um, you know, all three are optional, and so, and so I ran I ran that tool and basically extracted the audio clips for the sentences as well as a picture. Of course, the picture is not as no useful here, but uh, um, it's kind of cool. Like when you're doing a a, a, a J drama or some some anime, and um, then once I have the sentences, then I can use this um, extract um, exporter that will extract all the unique words. And I created a, a words study list and uh, ran the uh, the auto auto translate and also the synthesized audio. Konnichiwa. And so I can study these in the flashcards as well. So it's the same thing as I did for the others, but th this is nice in that the uh, the uh, the sentences are uh, you know more correct, more closer to what she actually said. Although it's interesting, I find that when when people write down their their transcript, they they omit things, you know, like itto and pauses. They might even substitute words. But still, I've got a native Japanese, native Japanese speakers here talking, and so um, this is what I've been studying the last couple of days. So uh, basically, those three things are the core of my study. One, studying the kanji. Two, studying vocabulary that's from some actual input. 
and three, studying the actual input. And very shortly, I'm going to spend more time actually reading the subtitles as well for my reading practice. Or I may go to, there's, a, there's other websites that have some material for reading practice. And the fourth thing that I, I haven't really mentioned yet is that uh, I'll, I'll get more input on basically from watching uh, J-dramas. Um, I can I can watch stuff from Netflix and use the uh, language learning with Netflix plugin. Um, you can find a link for that on, on that document that I mentioned. Um, I'll show it to you right here, actually. I'll give you the link to this document where I kind of give a mini review of, of all the tools that I've used in the past and, and some of which I'm currently using, also even some people. Like, uh, actually, what really got me going was this Matt Bonder fellow who, uh, who basically used AJAT and is very near fluent in Japanese. Um, and he has a YouTube channel called Matt vs. Japan. And he really got convinced me that, uh, uh, you know, focusing on input is a good way to go. And there's other folks. And I've also got some Chinese resources, Japanese, and even some Arabic. And so you can, you can look at that and look at some other resources. Like in addition to the Netflix plugin, there's also... Uh, content website called Viki that has Japanese and Korean and Chinese and other language uh, videos and they have a, a learn mode that does a very similar thing. And also there's a website called Animelon that for just anime which does a similar thing. But uh, the, uh, the language learning with Netflix plugin I think it's probably the best quality and so I'll use that one. I actually have a tool um, I downloaded, unfortunately it's for pay, which is listed in here somewhere, that you can download Netflix videos, so I can actually put them into JT language as well. I, I, I have some. Such as uh, this erased video. Oh, that's the teacher talking, and he's going to go go call through, do a roll call, which is not that interesting. And so on. Uh, so this is an actual Netflix um, content. I didn't I didn't put up the video. Um, storing the actual videos is you know is a lot of bandwidth. For my website, so I don't do that as much. Um, but I got the sentences and I, and uh, extracted the words. And so, anyway, this video has gotten too long. So let me just re reiterate that um, I think that uh, focusing on input first. Well, first you have to acquire you know some basic skills in Japanese. And so that's first focusing on the con learning the kanji, which I recommend doing from the get go. You know, we're learning some simple grammar and then really diving into the input, finding something that's uh, comprehensible and uh, you know, using tools like uh, language learning with Netflix or what I've done in JT language to, to make it comprehensible. Um, I've actually seen um, kind of in better progress in the last couple months uh, than previously. So um, I'm going to keep it up and hopefully, you know, get to where I, I feel, you know, more fluent in Japanese. I'll, I'll probably never be, you know, like Matt Bonder, but um, I hope to at least be able to have some simple conversations so that when we can actually go back to Japan and take that cruise, um, I'll actually have some conversation ability. Any questions, you know, drop me a line. And uh, good luck on your own studies. Bye.